We're talking all about the three, two, one buy down strategy. This is a way that could potentially allow you to have a much lower interest rate and potentially afford your dream home. You do not want to miss it. If it's your first time here, my name is John Boyd. I'm a certified financial planner and I'm the founder and lead wealth advisor at Modern Wealth. We're a fiduciary fee-only financial planning firm located in Scottsdale, Arizona, but we serve clients all over the country. So, so it's no secret right now. Rates are high. Home prices are high. And this is inevitably pricing a lot of folks out of buying a home. Or a lot of folks are just having flat out sticker shock and say, you know what, I'll just wait it out. I'll wait for that mortgage bubble to happen or I'll wait for rates to go back down to 3%. So here's the deal with that. We have a major supply issue in the United States with homes. And because there's such limited supply of homes, that is inevitably keeping prices up. In addition to that, the days of rates being 3%, sometimes way below 3%, I believe are likely behind us. Will rates likely fall in the future? There's a strong chance that will happen. But to expect that you'll get a 3% mortgage here in the next couple of years is very, very unlikely. So as a result, this is kind of priced out a lot of people or a lot of folks are just kind of shelving the idea of buying a home because it's just a little bit too expensive for them. In reality, there are creative financing solutions that could potentially allow you to live in your dream home now. The 321 buy down strategy is a way you could potentially do it. Here's how it works. So here's the example that we're going to look at. You have a $500,000 30-year fixed note at 7%. So again, a $500,000 mortgage, 30-year fixed at 7%. Notice on the far right side, years four through 30 on that mortgage, it's at 7% and your principal and interest is at $3,326. This is where the three, two, one buy down strategy comes into play. What this does is that it reduces your mortgage the first three years of the note. So year one, your mortgage is 4%. Year two, it's 5%. Year three, it's 6%. And then years four through 30, it goes to the normal rate, the standard rate of 7% for the remainder of the mortgage. The result is you have pretty significant monthly savings when you look at the monthly breakdown. So, so highlighted in blue are the monthly savings. So for example, year one, your monthly payment, principal and interest would be $2,387. That's savings of $939 a month. Year two, it goes to $624. And year three, $329. So again, when you add this all up, this is well over $20,000 in savings. And when you think about it, this could perhaps make a home that was uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch significantly more affordable. Sounds really cool, right? So what's the catch? Well, first and foremost, this isn't free, right? Somebody is paying for all these savings. So there's really three primary ways that this could happen. So number one, you could obviously pay for it. And the way that you pay for it is that you pr effectively prepay all that interest up front. If you do that, that's going to add to your acquisition costs and you're going to have to do the math on when you would break even on doing that. And again, that is not cheap to prepay all that interest so that you could get that saving. And for a lot of folks, prepaying all that interest is like, well, to heck with it. I'm not going to buy a home or I'm just going to look for a cheaper home. So reasonable to think that. But there's still two other ways that you could potentially get a 3 2 one buy down without you paying for it. Two primary ways, the builder pays for it. So if you're looking at a new build, clear of the home could potentially provide credits to you to deploy this type of strategy. It's an incentive for you to go ahead and take that leap of faith to buy the home. Or the third primary way that this could potentially be financed is through the seller. Maybe the seller of the home 
really wants to incentivize somebody to buy their home, right? So this is a way that perhaps in negotiation, you could acquire the home and the seller actually finance this buy down for you in order to make the home more affordable to you. So bottom line is if, if the seller or the builder is going to subsidize a three, two, one buy down for you almost entirely out of their pocket, to me, that sounds like a pretty darn sweet deal and you should potentially pounce on that. But here's the issue at the end of the day, this is effectively a variation of a traditional arm, an adjustable rate mortgage. So this is the way that I would view it if you find yourself in a position where you can do the three, two, one buy down and it's being financed by, let's say the seller. You need to consider three key, key items. First and foremost, let's pretend that you were stuck in this example with that 7% mortgage at $500,000. You were stuck with that mortgage now. Would you be far in over your head or would you still be able to swing it financially? If you could still swing it financially, maybe it's, it's tight on your budget, but you could still afford it, then this could potentially be a really great strategy because even if you end up having to pay the higher mortgage in year four through 30, you're not going to be eating canned beans and ramen for the rest of your life, right? You're able to still uh, cover and afford that mortgage. Second consideration, where's your income going, right? Th this, this one I, I feel like is very underrated. A lot of, I know financial planners really don't like to speculate on this, but, but it's also reality, especially for folks in their maybe late 20s, 30s, early 40s who are in their prime earning years and their income is just going up and up and up, this could potentially make a lot of sense. Great example of this. Let's say that you're a medical professional uh, in residency, you're married, you and your spouse make okay money together, not making the big bucks yet, but making some money and you really want to buy a home, but you know in a couple years that your income is going to go to the moon. Well, this could potentially be a way that you could finance that home purchase, right? Again, if you anticipate that your income is going to continue to rise and you know that you could more than cover that mortgage in the future and it's practically a done deal, then this could potentially work out. The third factor to consider is interest rates. Do you believe that interest rates are going to fall? And now when I say interest rates falling, I'm not talking about interest rates falling from, let's say, 7% all the way down to 3%, right? Again, I think that is relatively unrealistic. However, it is very much within reason that mortgage rates fall down to, call it 5.5% in the next couple of years, right? A 7% mortgage versus a 5.5% mortgage is a huge difference, right? That's, that's significant monthly savings if you were able to swing that instead. So if that were to happen, perhaps you refinance when that happens. So again, ideally, all three traits here, your income is going to go up, you can still afford that that normal rate, and on top of that, you have a belief that rates are gonna fall anyway. If all three of those apply to you, then I believe this could potentially be a really, really good strategy if you have the opportunity to swing it. Again, the stars need to align to deploy this three, two, one buy down strategy. Not every seller is going to agree to it. It's not necessarily gonna make sense for you to pay for it out of pocket in all cases. So again, you really need to weigh the pros and cons. The stars need to align. But if you find yourself in a position where this applies to you, it could certainly make a ton of sense. One final thing that I'll say, I would encourage you to map this out. If you, if you are in this situation, go ahead and model this out. What I do for clients is we go ahead and we model out their cash flow over the next 10 years 
and we forecast where their income is going, where their expenses are going, and we'll see if this can financially make sense. If it doesn't, we'll tell the client to go ahead, hey, shelve it, let's look for something else. But if it makes sense, we give our clients the green lights financially to do it. So I would encourage you to do something similar. Really sit down, model it all out, think about the numbers, because this could be a way that you could get your foot in the door for a home. And as we all know, real estate is one of the uh, primary mechanisms of building wealth in the United States. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, thoughts, concerns, comments uh, regarding your own finances, you can reach out to us at www.modernwealth.com. That's modern spelled with no vowels. Wealth. we'll see you next time.